Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. and Yom Tov. It's a good day. Amen. And uh, we, we don't live it different than other uh, Shabbat service. We usually light, uh, light the candle first and then we worship. But I just found out when we do worship first, we already open our heart to the Lord. It's better. And then uh, tonight is very special, special that uh, I thank to the Lord that we can do Seder again. We don't know how many times we can celebrate the Seder. We gather and gather like this. But this is my privilege, it's an honor to be here with you and whoever people come from the, all over the place, you're in the right place. The Seder is really contact the Father's heart that we come into the Lord. And right uh, in, a, in a moment that I'm gonna light the candle. You know, when I light the candle, this is the moment when I light the candle, it's not your time. It's not yours. So we come in under his time. We call it the money. His time and his presence. So uh, I'm gonna make the short, uh, so I'm gonna soon light the candle. Everyone close your eyes and uh, always think about the, who is your father in heaven. Just think about the, your, uh, the Yeshua, the presence of the Lord. And at this moment, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the candles of Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna set this up. Where there's a point in the service where they're gonna start serving some food. The food that's on the table is part of the Seder, and Rabbi Shaul will be going through that. And if you're gonna eat the lamb, you're gonna have to put some mint jelly on it. How many people have ever had mint jelly? Now, if you haven't had lamb until you put mint jelly on it, <laughs> and lots of horseradish. It's not in salt. We need more salt. But um, this this has been a, a interesting time for a lot of us. Our prayers do get heard. People question why do we have to do a seder? That's Jewish. No, in the Bible, this is His holiday. This is God's time. And we honor God when we light the candles. We we synchronize ourselves with the heavens and earth. And this say, this Seder here tonight, it's going to bring about uh, some changes for a lot of people, because this is when a lot of the Jewish people I meet, they get saved during the Seder because they see how Jesus is in the Seder, how he how he walked through this and he said this and why it meant something. So I'm gonna, without further ado, I'm going to call up Shaul Kasal. I like this guy. I know, we, we talk about what, three times a week? A couple times a week? Yeah, All right, you got your mic? Yes. Is it on? Oh, he's running, mm -hmm. see? Yeah, he's I, I turned it on already, it's green. Mm -hmm. Is it green there? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you need up here, Rabbi? No. You need a cup. I need a cup. I have four. Well, you can, those are clean. Okay, Where's so... You got oh, your water, your towel? I got my water, I got everything. Where's that? You got your shofar? Yes, I got my shofar. You need an extra toilet? I got an extra toilet. Uh, it's cold. Maybe I should have it a lot. Well, we, we may have to... How many people are cold? Uh, One. But, okay. You know what? Achrer avim lehatot. It means to... In Hebrew, it means that we have to behave as most of the people. If everybody is hot, I'm supposed to be hot too. I'm in. supposed to be warm. Thank you so much, Carl. Chag Sameach, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. 
I'm uh, Shaul Katsav, or uh, as uh, you call me, Rappi Shaul Katsav, Rabbi Shaul Katsav, and I'm honored to be here, um, and uh, I'm pretty uh, amazed by the size of this uh, crowd. Um, that is uh, that is a good sign. That it's, a, it's a wonderful sign uh, um, to see how many believers really want to see the uh, and uh, identify with uh, the Jewish side of the Messiah, the manifestation of Yeshua the, Mes the Messiah. When I say Yeshua, Jesus, I, I hope you all understand. Uh, and uh, every high holiday of Passover, I'm uh, excited. Uh, there is a rejuvenation of excitement regarding introduction, the introduction of Yeshua the Messiah through the Passover, through the Pesach. Honestly, it is the highlight, but Yeshua has manifested himself and will manifest himself through all the Jewish high holidays. Uh, Passover is just the highlight. Um, there's a lot to say, but there's a lot to say about uh, the Day of Trumpet that will happen seven months from now. Rosh Hashanah, the Day of Atonement, Sukkot, Tabernacle. There's so much to say about the manifestation of Yeshua uh, through the, all the Jewish high holidays. Uh, what is exciting is that Yeshua grew up as a Jew. He celebrated those high holidays. He celebrated the last high holiday. He celebrated with his disciples was a Jewish holiday. He died on a Jewish high holiday. He resurrected on a Jewish high holiday. Not Easter. Pesach, Omer, first fruit, which is celebrated during Pesach. And let me tell you, he resurrected, he ascended to the heavens. And he, his spirit came on a Jewish high holiday, Shavuot which will happen seven weeks from now. And let me tell you something, if, if, that, if you could see that order, eventually he will come back on a Jewish high holiday. Amen. Okay? Yeah. Uh, now that in, in a negative quote is like, Ahmadinejad went to a fortune teller and he said to him, you know, President, I used to be President Ahmadinejad, the Iranian president. And he said, he went to a fortune teller and asked him, Tell me, when will I die? And the fortune teller told him, you are going to die in a Jewish holiday. He said, Oi, Jewish holiday? I hate the Jewish people so much, I don't know what to do. Why did I have to die in a Jewish holiday? So the fortune teller told him, Chisham, which means my beloved in Iranian. He said, any day that you will die, it will be a Jewish high holiday. <laughs> That's a good icebreaker. <laughs> but before I will start with the Pesach, I cannot ignore the story of the Passover. I cannot ignore the events that happened uh, in, the, in the last few days, especially with that most of the crowd here are from uh, South Korea. Uh, with the events that happened now with uh, uh, the ferry that was capsized and there are still probably there are more than 270 people that are missing young men and women. Uh, I thought that maybe we should uh, just all be now gather in one heart because I believe that the Lord could hear prayers. Especially, especially when we're talking about being victorious over the ocean and uh, the, the roughness of the ocean. The only, uh, the Lord has won the ocean. He departed the Red Sea. And Yeshua told to the storm to come down. It was calm. So let's all uh, join now, right now in prayer. Uh, spontaneous prayer to the, to, the, to the safety of those people. If there are people that are spared to be. Lord, we lift up. Yes, God. Lord. Lord, we lift up, Lord, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Lord, this ferry before you, O oh Lord. I'm, Lord, I know that you are watching the devastation of the people, Lord. You, you see the devastation of the parents and you see the devastation of the people, of the rescue uh, people that are trying to save lives. 
I pray in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Lord. I ask for Chaim, for life in the name of Yeshua yes, the Messiah. Amen. For life, bring forth life, Lord, and rescue. Give wisdom to the rescue people, Lord. Give creativity, O oh Lord, that people will be spared. We ask in the name of Yeshua the Messiah that there will be a hope and life, Lord. Bring life and rescue to those that are in trap. Thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Oh Lord God of Israel, with you everything is possible. Oh God of Israel, as you departed the Red Sea. Lord, when you said to the sea to come down, Lord, you can do all things. And we ask, Lord, that you will bring life in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Life and hope in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Oh God of Israel, please answer this prayer in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Reunion the, reunion the families, oh Lord, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Today is the 18. And the 18 is a very significant number. Uh, in Judaism, uh, because it's the combination of the letters Chet and the letter Yod, any, uh, any letter has a volume, numeric volume, every letter in Hebrew has a numeric volume. And Chai means alive, you know? Chai means alive, uh, the, and it's a combination of 18. So just let's have it in mind today, I mean, during this evening. That we have chai and that the Lord wants us to have life. He wants us to choose life. Amen. 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 So, uh, I would like to, uh, to start with the shofar blast. For this event. in my heart uh, today and uh, before we'll even start about the Seder I just want to share with you what the Lord has spoken to me today from the Haggadah from the book of the telling Haggadah from the word to tell uh, I will share with you why do we tell the story of the Haggadah Uh, I felt so impressed today in the spirit to quote to you a verse that is written in the Haggadah. Kind of a conclusion. And actually for me it was uh, a message to say why this high holiday? Why, why do we need to speak about it over and over again? Not just, not just to, uh, to, to, to share with you as, as believers that most of you are not Jews, just to share with you how Jewish is, is, is this Passover, how, how Jewish are your roots, how, let's say, actual, how real this high holiday is, how important is it for you to understand about this high holiday. And I want to quote it for you a verse that the people that wrote this book, the Haggadah, came to a conclusion. And tell me if it's real for today regarding the Jewish people. It says here, Vehi she'amda la'avotenu velanu, shelo echad bilvad amad alenu lechalotenu, ela shebechol dor vador עומדים עלינו לכלותנו, והקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו מידם. Did you understand everything? <laughs> I didn't even say it in Korean. <laughs> Hear what it says. 
It speaks about the promises, the promises of the Lord, the covenant of the Lord, and the Torah, the law of the Lord. And then the reference to it, it says, it is, the promises, as I said, the covenant and the Torah, it is that, st that has stood by our fathers and us. For not only one has risen against us to annihilate us, to annihilate us, but in every generation they rise against us to annihilate us. But the Holy One, blessed is He, rescues us from their hand. Amen. The Jewish people came to a conclusion when the Haggadah was written many, many, many years ago, that in every generation, there will be a nation or even individual that will do their best, that will do their utmost to destroy the Jewish people, but they recognize one more thing. They recognize that the Lord is standing, even though we don't see Him, we're standing to protect us and to keep us. Amen. And I ask myself why today. I ask myself why. Well, because when I look at the Jewish people and when I look at my life and I say, my goodness, I was saved 14 years ago. I came back from the Far East. I had this kind of amount of hair and I behaved like an Indian and I've done every sin under the sun. I hope not every sin, but I've done, I did sin. And I'm asking myself, how did I come from there to here, to this place? And now I'm, when I'm looking at, looking at my people that are walking in secular ways, not according to the promise, and a lot of the nations want to destroy, want to destroy the Jewish people, <laughs> including Ahmadinejad, and more other nations, and they want to destroy. Even though the Jewish people today are, they want to have secular lives, most of them. Live secular, secularly. And I say, why? Because of God's promise. Because God's covenant. Because He cannot change His mind and His word. And this is why He protects His people from any generation in order that those promises will come to pass whatever He promised to the Jewish people. Amen. It's all about Him eventually. So I just wanted to share with that, that with you today what the Lord prompted my spirit. There's many times that the Jewish people are going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They don't please God and He is upset and quiet with them and sometimes even don't want to hear them. But He always protects His people because He wants to manifest all His promises on over those people. And to manifest everything that is written right here in the Tanakh, in the Bible. So this is the story in a nutshell about the Passover. So are you ready to go to your meal or you want to hear more? more. <laughs> you want to hear more? Okay, good. The high holiday of Pesach is called also the holiday of spring. It's obvious spring came. I just on the way here really enjoyed to take the window down, to roll the window, not to take. To roll the window down and enjoy the spring day, Chag HaAviv. This is called also the holiday of freedom, the beginning of the high holidays. Biblically, I know that some of you are related to a lot of Jewish people, have friends, and you, celebrate, you know that in seven months from now, you're going to have, they're going to say, hey, we're celebrating Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Jewish year. That's the rabbinical Jewish year, not the biblical. The biblical Jewish year starts with the month of Nisan. Not a car, Nisan. <laughs> That's the month in Hebrew. The source is from Aramaic. And this is the, be the beginning of the month. And this is the head of the holiday that represents the beginning of the biblical year. Actually, in the Jewish calendar, in the Jewish uh, thought, there are four 
Rosh Hashanahs, the four beginnings of years. I'm not going to speak about it today, but just FYI. And of course, Chag HaMatzot, which means the Unleavened Festival. So right now, Kimberly, light the candle. And bless this Shabbat. Welcome to Shabbat and Yom Tov, the day of festival. And why do we light the candles? Why do we light the candles? Why two? First of all, we light the candles to, the, to put distinction between this day, Lela Seder, and all the other days. It's a day of holiday, a day of celebration, that we are commanded not to work, but to rest and just to celebrate this high holiday. A woman is lighting it. From the messianic perspective, a woman was used by the Lord to bring the light of the world. Miriam was, uh, became pregnant with Yeshua the Messiah, the son of the living God, and she brought the light of the world. So that's the messianic significance of it. And a woman lights the candle because she is running the house. She is Eshet Chai, a woman of virtue. I have a lovely Eshet Chai in my house. Of course, we are the head, but the wives are the neck. They, they know where to turn the head. To very <laughs> so, why two candles? It stands for two witnesses. According to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, According to uh, two witnesses or more, a word will establish. So those candles are standing as witnesses to whatever I'm going to tell you. Okay? If you're not going to believe the story of the Passover, ask the candles. They are going to be your witnesses. We are going to uh, take a look at the items of this beautiful Passover plate, okay? Or we, as we call it, the Seder plate, the Passover plate. Okay, what we have here is there are also several items that I need to bring from here and from here. And I don't, I don't have three hands, but uh, I'm just gonna do my best. Of course, we have matzot, unleavened bread. Parsley, and two kinds of bitter herbs, horseradish and lettuce. Lamb shank, and an egg. Now, I spoke to Carl about it, Pastor Carl. Some, it's not supposed to be burned, it looks like more like a, an egg of a zebra or something like that. <laughs> It's supposed to be a hard boiled egg and it's not to be eaten. I, I mean, you, you, if you want, you can eat it after, no problem. You will eat horseradish for sure and you will have a wonderful experience. But it's only for a display. Salt water. A pitcher with water inside. A bowl to, for the washing, and of course a napkin to, and four cups. Furthermore, we have a cup that is called the cup of Elijah. Now we are going to drink from all the other cups, but not from the cup of Elijah and I will speak about it later. So, where is that word Seder came from? The word Seder. Anyone knows what's the meaning of the word Seder in Hebrew? Anyone? Seder is order. I hear it somewhere. Seder is order. Because everything we're going to do now is following the order that was now, is this the right word to say predestined? By the authors of the Haggadah, the telling. And the order goes like that. 
I can say the first of Hebrew, it's like that. קדש רוחץ כרפס החץ, מגיד רחצה, מוציא מצה מרור, כורש שולחן עורך, צפון ברך, הלל נרצע. Which means, sanctify, wash, parsley, break in half, the telling, washing, bring out the matza, bitter herb, table preparing, hiding, blessing, worship, and conclusion. So we are going together experience the Pesach through the Seder, through writing, through uh, following the, the instructions of the Seder. Now, the original Seder started uh, three, uh, four days ago. That was the Seder where everybody celebrated. If you would go to Israel, if you fly to Israel a week, ago, you will see that the ladies and also the, the husbands and everybody are participating in cleaning the whole house. Cleaning like there is no tomorrow. And why do they clean so fundamentally? Because according to the commandments of the Lord, we are supposed to have, and I'm going to speak about it later, we are supposed to have no leaven at our home. Furthermore, it says no leaven in our border. And we're going to speak about that. They are cleaning and making sure that everything is clean. But, right before the Seder starts, few, an hour or two before that, it is a custom that... Usually the older man in the house, the grandpa, the grandpa takes the younger, the younger grandchild in the house. And what they do is, is, is a very interesting ceremony. What they do is that they go to walk, they walk into this super clean house and they throw crumbs of leavened bread in the house. <gasps> My goodness, why do they do that? Why? The house is spotless, clean from leaven, and then the grandfather comes and throw it away, throw it the crumbs. What a chutzpah, as we say in Hebrew. Chutzpah means nerve. Why do you do that? And then, what they do? They walk, the, the, the grandfather is holding the candle, and the grandchild is holding a feather and a spoon, or vice versa. Some of them hold something. And they walk and carefully take the feather and the spoon and they collect those crumbs. They put it into a piece of paper, walk outside and burn it. And that is called Tekes Biul Hamet, the ceremony of burning leaven. That is the ceremony, it is a custom. For years I saw it, that people are doing it and I didn't understand that, but you can understand it from the messianic perspective. The messianic perspective, this is what I, I feel to tell, to share with you today. And it is very important for us as believers to understand this concept. Even if we think in our kishkes, as you say in Judaism, in our hearts, that we are spotless without any more sin in our lives, we really need the Holy Spirit. For me, this was the symbol of the feather. And we really need the light of the world you know that candle that the grandfather holds to really understand the crumbs of leavens that are sitting in my, our hearts in order to take it off, take it out of the camp, take it out of our home, and then burn it. This is what we need to learn from this interesting ceremony. No matter how much we think that we are spotless, we really need the light of the world and the Holy Spirit to really bring things out. But when he brings it out, take it out, burn it, and don't come back to it anymore. So, we are going to start with the first cup. As I said, there are four cups. The first cup is called the cup of a sanctification, Kos HaKidush. So, all of you, please pour your first cup. By the way, 
I want each one of the tables to designate to designate an Abba. An Abba. Everyone to designate, every table to designate an Abba, which means a father of the table. Because I'm going to address and ask you for some things to do. So Abba, please designate a person. And by the way, that Abba needs to have some cash in his pocket. <laughs> So the first cup, cup of Kiddush, we're going to speak about every cup. The second cup is the cup of Magid or the cup of plagues. The third cup is the, called the cup of redemption, Kos Ageula. And the third cup is the cup of worship, which is called Kos Halel. As I said, the Lord has commanded us not to have leaven at our home or even in our border and let me read to you from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 Deuteronomy the book of Devarim chapter 16 verse 4 no leaven is to be seen with you anywhere in your territory for seven days yes seven days none of the meat from your sacrifice on the first day in the evening is to remain all night until morning. You may not sacrifice the Pesach offering in just any of the towns that Adonai your God is giving you. That was the scripture. And please, let's start now with a cup of Kiddush. If you may please join me. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Bore pri hagafen Amen Blessed are you Lord our God, King of the Universe who created the fruit of the vine the Chaim Chaim You know, it's all sound very new to you. For those of you that haven't been in the Pesach Seder before. But during the time of the first church, or in the first years after the crucifixion, crucifixion and the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah, the Gentiles understood a lot about their Jewish roots and I can give you uh, an example from the Bible from the New Testament you thought that probably I'm not going to open the New Testament but I will or whoever thought the Brit Chadasha as we like to call it Shaul HaShaliyah Paul the Apostle spoke and actually rebuked the Corinthians for their promiscuous behavior. He addressed them, and since there are children here, I'm not going to speak that much about the details of this behavior that has very uh, bad immorality into it. But I'm going to speak what Shaul, how Shaul addressed the Kehila, the congregation of the Corinthians in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. He speaks about repentance through the Passover, through, through the high holiday of Passover. So back then it was obvious that those Gentiles, the Corinthians, knew very well about the Passover. He says, your boasting is not good. Don't you know the saying, it takes only a little chametz, a little leaven, to leaven or a little yeast. To leaven a whole batch of dough, get rid of the old chametz. So, get rid of all the leaven, so that you can be a new batch of dough. <coughs> because in reality, you are unleavened. In reality, we are unleavened. We are like this, like matzah. 
for the Pesach lamb, the Messiah, has been sacrificed. So let us celebrate the Seder. Not with leftover chametz, the leaven of wickedness and evil, but with the matzah, with unleavened bread of purity and truth. The Corinthians understood it very, very, very well. Back in those days, it was very vivid for them how Jewish their Messiah is, and it was very prominent. So, now, what is the next? Kadesh, we drank the cup of wine, and now, of course it's grape juice, it's not wine, unless the Lord will do a miracle now. That's not my, that's not my department, yes? It will turn to be alcohol, that's his department. Now we are going to rechatz, the washing of the hands. So please, Abba, do you have a washing of hands? No. I don't no. So no, I'm not on the table. No shower for you today. <laughs> no shower. So I'm just going to uh, show you what we do. We just pass it. Red towel. Red towel. We say bracha. There is a lot. You're gonna hear a lot of Jewish prayers today. Which means that's the king of the universe. When we sanctify this one regarding washing of the hands, that was the time. That was the time when Yeshua, in the Seder, in the last high holiday that they celebrate on earth. It was the set of that was the time when he washed his disciples' feet. And you know, I remember that part. It's very beautifully described in the book of Yohanan, chapter 13. He came to Kaifa, Peter, and Peter said, Oh no, the Lord, don't don't wash me. And he said, If you know, I'm not gonna wash your feet, you don't have part in me. And then he said, Okay, give me a shout. <laughs> so that was the time. Okay, now we're going to go for the main dinner that you have. Today, this is your dinner. Please pick up, Abba, everybody, pick up a piece of parsley. And what do we eat this green? Uh, the parsley. Several things, don't eat yet. There's going to be a prayer before you. It's, it's green, so it reminds us of the time, the time of the spring. Also, the parsley reminds us of the hyssop. The hyssop was a holy vegetable that was used, were used to purify in the, at the time when the temple exists, the first and the second temple were built. And uh, even uh, David wrote about it. When he repented before the Lord about the sin with Vaichiva in the book of Psalm chapter 51, he spoke about and he asked the Lord to cleanse him with a hyssop. With a hyssop. Uh, in the book of uh, Yohanan, chapter 19, verse 29, it says that one of the, it's written that one of the Roman soldiers took a hyssop and stick the sponge and served Yeshua with a sponge of. <coughs> that was soaked with vinegar to accelerate to his thirst and his, his, uh, to accelerate his death with a hyssop. So anyway, we are on top of that, the Jewish, the, the Hebrews were commanded to use the hyssop to sprinkle, to, or to, to, uh, to put the blood of the lamb that they kept that they slaughtered at the time of dusk with a hyssop. So that is a reminder. So, since it's going to be dinner for you today, let's start eating now. What we do is this. Take the salt water and dip twice. One, two, see? And let's say 
A bracha? No, a bracha means a prayer. I'll just be... <laughs> <laughs> Please join me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Bore Bri Haadama. Which means, this is your Lord of the King of your universe who create the fruit of the earth and eat. Woo! Folk it. Are you ready or ready for the second cup? Yes, <coughs> so. Why do we immerse twice? You know what I'm speaking about it now. Why do we immerse twice? One time is for the tears of the sons of Israel when they were in slavery, carrying bricks and whipped by the Egyptians. <coughs> and I'm sure that they were crying for 400 years. They were crying. They were under the bondage of slavery. And one time, the second time, they, they were, when they were for, to, resist, to remind us that they crossed, eventually became free, and through the Red Sea. So their tears are salty, and the Red Sea is salty. So this is why you have experienced saltiness right now. So this is why we do that. This time, what the Father, what the Father of the table is doing, is lifting up this this uh, plate and he says the very ancient Aramaic prayer that is called Ha Lachma Anya which means this is the bread of affliction and they lift it all up this is a ceremony that the Jewish people do and this is it's very interesting for you to understand what they said it's all Aramaic prayer or Aramaic uh, uh, presentation to me to be more correct, it says, this is the bread of affliction, the poor bread which our fathers ate at the land of Egypt. Let us all who are hungry come and eat. Let us all who are in need share the hope of Pesach. You're not supposed to uh, eat it right now, but if you want to do it, you can do it. This year we are here. Next year we are in the land of Israel. This year we are slaves. Next year free people okay so now we ate the parsley and we are moving towards the most one of the most central uh, events of the Passover the Manishtana the questions the Manishtana questions and how many questions are asked four. four and usually what they do they the 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 family let the children sing the Manishtana. How, and Manishtana means in Hebrew, how different is this night from all the other nights? Now, is there, are there any children here in the crowd that know the song of Manishtana? Anyone? Any kid? No one? No kid. I mean, there are kids, but they don't know the Manishtana. Okay, it will be, it's always nice to hear this beautiful, thin voice singing the Manishtana. I'm going to, because I want to spare my voice, I'm not going to sing the whole song, just one part of it, because I want to, to, to really save my voice. So this is how it sounds. Manishtana halayla haze Mikol halelot Mikol halelot Shebechol halelot Anu ochlin chametz umatza, chametz umatza. Halayla ze, halayla ze kulo matza. Halayla ze, halayla ze kulo matza. That is one quarter, thank you. That is one quarter, and uh, thank you for not running away. <laughs> this is one quarter of this song, a very traditional song, that the children sing in the Passover. And everybody are waiting for this uh, song to be heard. And it was a wonderful experience for me as a kid to celebrate the Seder, and then, you know, in Israel, you don't have houses that are 
so far away from each other and everything. You cannot hear what's going on in the house uh, because there's AC and the whole house is... No, in the springtime, everybody will open the windows and we are living in, in, in flats, in apartments, and then you hear it from other families. It's just a beautiful experience. I hope that you will experience once if you go to Israel and celebrate the Pesach. Uh, the Passover at Lela Seder in real time. But anyway, there are four songs. There are four questions. And why do the children ask? Why do they care? They sing the questions. Well, because it's God's commandment. God's commandment? Yes, God's commandment. Turn with me, if you have Bibles, to the book of Shemot, the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 25. It says, when you come to the land which Adonai will give you, Adonai means the Lord, will give you, as He has promised, you are to observe this ceremony, which talks about the Pesach. When your children ask you, what do you mean by this ceremony? Say, it is the sacrifice of Adonai's Pesach, Passover. Because Adonai passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt. When he killed the Egyptians, but spared our houses. Okay, so there's a commandment, and of course, we're talking about the, ch the children will ask about the ritual that happened in Pesach, the ritual of sacrificing the lamb. But since we don't have, we do not have the Paso the, the, the temple anymore, which was, was the, uh, the cornerstone of all Judaism, and still is, we have a display of a lamb shank at the Passover plate. And the questions are about the customs that the Jewish people are doing now. The questions are like that. In all other nights, we eat chametz and matzah. We eat leaven and unleaven. Why in this, at this night we eat only unleavened matzah? By the way, the whole process in order to make this big cracker that you see. In order to make this a kosher product, product, it takes 18 minutes. You have to make the dough. Imagine to yourself how fast people need to be. And some people do it manually, and they did it for, for thousands of years. They make the dough with cold water, without yeast, of course, and then they, they, they roll it, they make uh, the stripes on it, and they bake it, and it has to take only no more than 18 minutes because they have researched and realized that after 18 minutes, the dough turns to leaven. Wow. Oh my goodness. My goodness. <laughs> okay? So, in all other nights, we eat chametz and matzah, where this night we eat only unleavened. And the father needs to answer that. Lama and why? In all other nights, we eat different kind of vegetables, and this night we eat bitter herb. <laughs> in all other nights we immerse, we, 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 uh, we don't even dip one time. And this night we dip twice. Okay, I gave you the answer for that. Why do we dip twice It's the salt water? And all other nights we either sitting or reclining. At this night we are reclining, it is a custom at the Jewish homes is not just to sit on chairs, but to take a nice pillow covered with white, you know, pillow cover, and to recline on it, to sit in it, this kind of, oh, I'm cool position. <laughs> like it. Why do we recline? So the father has to answer those questions. Because it is a commandment. You know, there is a beautiful teaching in Judaism about why the the tablets the tablets of stone were written on stone why not on beautiful like 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 made of gold like you know like uh, the mormons had gold plates didn't they that and mr john smith had these special glasses to look at them and to understand what was going on Woo, gold 
I mean, the, the Hebrews had gold. Couldn't God take some gold and, and let Moses carry it to the, to, to the mountain and then he will ride with his fingers over gold? They had enough gold. Why not gold? Why not silver? It's shiny, it's nice. Why not wood? Why stone? Well, that's very interesting teaching because in at the teaching there, the word in Hebrew for stone is Evan. Evan. The word Av, father, and the word son is hidden in it. Like to pass it from father to son. Evan. Av, father, Ben, son. To pass the story from father to son. To pass the Torah from father to son. Father, son. It's all about the telling of the story and passing it on. So anyway, so why do we eat matzah? Because of the haste. The people of Israel were in haste. They were in a hurry. They knew that something is about to happen. And they were in haste and they baked the matzah and they didn't let it to rise. From the messianic perspective, guys, you know, uh, we all ate communion. And I know that some of you had a, a eaten communion that, uh, that looks like, like a, a pita bread. In, uh, actually, when you see a lot of Christian movies that want to bring this moment and they, they let Yeshua sit on the floor and, and drink from clay glasses to make it really real. Like he, it was not like they want those uh, Christians directors. They don't want to show the picture of, of Yeshua standing like that on next to a table like Leonardo da Vinci's picture that it looks like it fit to back to the time. No, they wanted to go back in 2000 years. So they want to show Yeshua uh, really drinking from a clay cup. But, 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 it was Seder. And then they show that Yeshua is passing around pita bread. <laughs> Leaven. <coughs> Full, fat, bread, pita bread, chametz. No. Yeshua, as, as, when he said, I am the bread of life and eat. When he had the first, whatever we call it, communion, he passed this. And let me tell you, this is actually the best picture of Yeshua. No leaven in him. Yeshua said, I have no shifting shadow in me. I don't have any sin in me. No chametz, no leaven. And also he was pierced to, of, because of our transgressions. He was pierced because of us. So look at that. Look, I want to show you something really real here. See all the piercings? This is actually the picture of Yeshua the Messiah. He was pierced without sin. He was not deserved it. But this is the ultimate picture of what is the true bread of life. Without sin, without chametz. Why do we eat marol? Why do we eat bitter herb? To remind us that we are... To remind us, each one of us need to remember like he went out of Egypt. Each one of us need to experience the, the penalty of, of slavery. And since the people of Israel suffered bitter, and on top of that, they were commanded, we have two kinds of bitter herbs on the Passover table or Passover, Passover plate. Why do we have two kinds? Because the people of Israel put two kinds of bitter herbs on the Passover lamb. So we eat bitter herbs to remember. We need to see ourselves as we went out from Egypt. Why do we recline? Why do we recline? Remember the commandment of the Lord was that the people of Israel were supposed to eat how they were supposed to eat sitting no they were supposed they were not supposed they were commanded to eat standing and ready to go they were standing and ready to go standing and ready to go but still slaves yes now since we are free we are reclining we are sitting we are laying down now when you ask yourself, why did the Lord make this? Why, 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 why? Did you ever ask yourself why? I like to ask why. Why the wall is white? I want to ask why. Why the ceiling is black? I want to ask why. 
Why? Why did the Lord cause this weird thing to happen? Now let me share with you why the Lord did that. Okay, first of all, he commanded to take a lamb. How old was the lamb? A year old, without blemish. Yeshua was without blemish. And how many days it was supposed to be that lamb? From the 10th of Nisan till the 14th at dusk time. Now what do we have at the home? You bring a lamb into the house. What, what do you see in the home? What do you have in the home? Children. What, is the, what are the children doing when they see a lamb? They become friends of it. It's a year old lamb. It's not a big lamb. It's a cutie. They play with it. They call it names. They feed. They give it milk. They put a crown to his head. They play, they comb his hair. And then suddenly those little children see that father is taking little lamb and slaughter that lamb in the backyard. On top of that, he take this hyssop and pour this blood over the doorpost. Fluffy's blood is splattered all over the door. On top of that, he take a skewer and Stick it in Fluffy <laughs> and roll Fluffy as is. So the children has to see the face of Fluffy. Uh -huh. Whole, not cooked, right there. And then on top of that, I like to say on top of that. <laughs> the children don't know what's going on, but they are, they, they are, they, they, daddy says you have to eat this Fluffy. And the children, I don't think they wanted to eat this fluffy. And, and mommy and dad are really weird. They, mommy's cooking these weird cooking cakes uh, that are matzah eventually. They're all ready. They packed up stuff. And it's night. And they eat. And they are like in preparation. You see that there is uneasiness going on. And before, and Sunday at 12, you hear screaming from the na Egyptians' neighborhood. Ah, my son! And you hear screaming like you never heard before. And suddenly father says, okay, children, let's go. And the children leave Egypt in the night while they're hearing this screaming with a memory of truth that father is forcing them to eat fluffy. <laughs> that, and they're going in the middle of the night. They don't know where they're going. To, but daddy, I want to sleep. No, we're not sleeping. We're not, we need to go. Where? We need to go. The children are crying. They don't know what's going on. Why did God do that? Because He, the Lord, designed those children to go through an experience of trauma in order that they would not be able to even to think about coming back to Egypt. Mm. That generation of children grew up to their 40s and became the conquerors of the Holy Land. Because the child will never go to a back to a place of trauma. There was a trauma there. Fluffy was massacred by father. We were supposed to eat Fluffy and then in the middle of the night there was screaming of mourning. And then we had to leave. We, we, I don't want to go back. Remember what the father said? Oh, we sat on the, the, the pot of meat. We were, we, it was so good in Egypt. Let's make a golden calf. Go back to Egypt. The children will never think about that. The children were just, just thinking about going forward. Never go back to a place of trauma. Same will happen to us. As believers, the first believers, they crowned Yeshua. Everything was so cool. He made the, the, the bread and the fish miracles. And he resurrected the dead. And he healed the leper. And everything was so cool. He comes to Jerusalem. Everybody were fighting. Who's going to sit to the right? Who's going to sit to the left? Suddenly, what do they see? A naked Mashiach on the cross. Beaten up. Humiliated, everybody run away, don't want to recognize them. Only the women stayed. The women stayed. The men, we're all running away. But the Lord did that in order to put the disciples in a place of trauma that eventually they will get mature through that and be eventually though those 12 eventually changed the world because they had to go to an experience 
of maturity. So we need to speak about three things. We need to speak about the matzah, we need to speak about the maror, and we need to speak about the Passover lamb. And I spoke about the whole three. We're not going to eat this. I don't want you to go to the dentist after this. We're not going to eat this bone. However, we are going to go through several eating. So what we're going to do is this. First of all, I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing that I am, have almost forgot to say and introduce. This is the matzah tush. This is the matzah tush. Each one of them has compartments. So what we're going to do is this. Father, Abba, if you have a matzah tush, use it. If not, just take one matzah and take it and do what I do. Okay, we have three, each one of the matzah in one compartment, like that. You see? One, two, three. We're taking the middle matzah. The middle matzah. And we break it to half. Break it in half. Take the bigger. Take the bigger, Father. Take the bigger one. Cover it with napkin. Cover it with napkin, please. And, and hide it, hide it, and be prepared with your shekels. We're going to speak about it. Okay, hide it. Now, with the other half, break a piece and pass it to your, the other uh, neighbors to your table. Love your neighbors yourself. Soon the cup of plagues will come. Soon the cup of plagues will come, but first we need to do something like that. Please join me with a prayer, with a bracha. Not bracha, just. Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam. Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Just a second. Baruch atah Adonai. אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו, וציוונו על אכילת מצה. First prayer, blessed are you Lord our God, King of the universe, who bring forth bread from the earth. And the second one is, blessed are you Lord our God, King of the universe, who will satisfy this command regarding eating matzah and eat. Before we eat the bitter herbs, we are going to pour the next cup, the second cup. This is called, what is the second cup? The cup of the telling, Magid in Hebrew. Magi. We call it also the cups, uh, the cup of plagues. And now there is a very interesting ceremony that we do. Okay. We are going to take our little pinky. Usually, traditionally, it's a red wine, but here we have white or red grape juice. And I'll tell you why do we pick red. But right now, it's too late to pick up red grape juice. And now, take your pinky and repeat after me. Blood and pour one dot on a napkin. Repeat after me, so you did blood. Frog. Lice. Flies. Pestilence. Boil. Oil. Hail, Hail. Locust. Locust. Darkness. Darkness. 
Death of firstborn. And lick your pinky. <laughs> and usually we put it over a plate. This uh, it is going to be a display, so you can see like over this napkin there's a little bit picture of smiley here. But it's not exactly smiley. <clears throat> when we do that, when we uh, take the pinky, take from a cup that is usually red, you see red drops of blood. And the reason why the Jewish people are doing it all over the world is to uh, identify also with the pain of the oppressors, the Egyptians. They were the oppressors, they uh, enslaved the people of Israel, they put them in slavery, they, they killed their own, their, the firstborn uh, or the, any male. They caused us misery, but we are not happy when they had misery. And therefore, it's, it's just, uh, even though it's a time of joy for us to be free, we identify with the pain of the Egyptians. It also shows us, and if it will be drops of red, that it takes, uh, freedom takes price of blood. Freedom takes price of blood. And Yeshua the Messiah paid with His blood for each one of us. <coughs> for freedom. Yes? So it's just a reminder for us, take it to heart. Okay, we yet we're going to uh, drink this cup, and please join me. The second cup, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Bore Pri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, Creator of the Divine Lachan. Okay. Now we need to eat the maro, horseradish. So please, be, be as much as generous to yourself. If you really want more, I would love, I would be honored to give you more, anyone? And please put it over the matzah. Put it over the piece of the matzah. Is that this? Yes. Now, before we start the bracha, I want you, I, re I really want you to, to let, don't eat yet, to let uh, the horseradish or the maror to stay at least for 10 seconds in your mouth. At least for 10 seconds in order that you remember the bitterness of sin and not to return to it anymore. Okay? It's very, you can enjoy sin for a while, but then eventually it will turn to bitter, guaranteed. So that will be a good reminder. So please join me with a prayer. Baruch Atah Adonai. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Kiddeshanu. Bemitzvotav. Betzivanu. Ad Achilat Maro. Which means, blessed you, Lord God, King of the Universe, when we sanctify this commandment regarding eating Maro, bitter herb, and eat. No. Ten seconds. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Send it over here, guys. Oh! Oh! It makes me feel like I want to jump like a frog, man. Woo! Do you feel the air? Do you feel the... Do you feel the nostrils? Woo! Hallelujah. Oh! Hallelujah. And that holy fire. Holy fire! Yeah! Okay. Let's make your life easier. Every time you're thinking about sinning, just remember the taste. Okay. Now it's easier part. Just eat the haroset. It's a reminder of the mortar that the people of Israel were commanded to, it will ease your pain from the horseradish, okay? No bracha, no prayer, just eat it in order to sweeten your life. Tell, tell them what you did. 
Paul Holter made of the expertise of Paul Ritter. He put green apples, cinnamon, honey, walnut. walnut. You need to try my kawaset. I'm not here to compete. It's made out of dates, and whoever ate my kawaset will never come back to any other kawaset. But, okay. Now, people of God, we come to the most interesting part of the meal. It is a meal. So, I would like to uh, ask Pastor Rita to come. Give your instructions. There is, here's how it, we're going to work. Listen, please, before Pastor will start with his instructions and prayer. I, you will eat. And I want you to eat, and there's more to the more to the seder, and I will continue talking while you are eating, and feel comfortable to do so. Okay? I want you to continue eating because of time, but I want you to enjoy the meal while I'm talking. Okay? Yes. You know, the seders are it's a family connection here. And so we appreciate everybody here tonight. When we start the meal, um, you have to remember, you know, there's a lot of hard work going on. When he, he put the haroset on the on the uh, matzah, it's like when they were building the pyramid, they took away the, the straw. This is something that also connects. It's sweet, and it connects us together. That sweetness and love. Father, we just praise you for the food tonight. That you do sanctify it through Yeshua. It is kosher because of your blood. Father, we just praise you that we can uh, use this night as a place of remembrance and a new beginning. Sanctify it for all of us in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. There's plenty, if, there's, if you want more food, we got plenty of food. Don't worry about the food. This is not one of those chicken leg... Passover. You get one chicken leg. Okay, we, got, we got a lot of it. We got the food, the matzah. We got extra matzah. If you want to take some of the matzah home, that's fine. If you can handle the horseradish, the the lamb itself, it tastes great with that mint jelly and the horseradish. Well, praise God. It's good. Uh, uh, the, the kids are bringing out the food right now. Uh, if anybody else wants to help bring the food in, that would be great too. I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, if the kids want to help, that's fine. They're, they're bringing it out as fast as possible. Now, Shaul is actually from Israel, if you didn't know that. He, that's not a New York accent. Uh, okay, Shaul, can I tell you a joke? Which joke? What did I miss? about the alligator. Yeah. What did I miss? I just gave away the points. But uh, Shaul, Shaul and I, we've been friends for about nine years. More than that. More than that. He was driving down the street one day at Mardell's, uh, and, and he stopped off at Mardell's, and he got a, a book. Come on. On your crack? Oh, on your crack? He got a, uh, he got a Bible for a Jewish man, an Israelite, that was in, uh, in the jail, and he got saved. So we have... Uh, language. Okay. How many people are not from the United States here? Put your hands up. We're born outside of the country. Okay. Um, you're from Ghana, Guyana, South America. South America. We also have, uh, we, we got Cubans, Indian, Bulgarian, Israelite. Oh, hi, Kim. On Florida, Florida, Mexico, Mexico. Uh, is Puerto Rico a country? Where are we from? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Both of us born there. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. A lot. If you if you if you're Hispanic and you got a Z in your name, the chances are you're uh, Safari. Right. You know. So just put that in there. Um, we have multiple languages. We have Japanese, Korean, uh, we have some Chinese, uh, Cambodian here. This is a really good time. Eat the salad. Um, 
Are you at the lamb already? You have no bread for the salad. <laughs> you have bread for the salad? Oh, he's going to be here. We'll, we'll bring it out. <laughs> I don't know what you're we're supposed to eat it on. Lamb is the best meat for your body. Right. Well, let, let me tell you something about the lamb. When they, when they slaughtered the lamb, and if you were afflicted with the disease, they would, they would ask you to eat the piece of meat of the lamb to correlate. Like if your heart, you had a heart disease, you'd eat the part of the lamb to heal your heart. It's like we have to go to the back of Yeshua to replace those things in us that have been damaged. Amen. There's two. Okay, I want you to continue to eat the wonderful, fabulous <coughs> lamb. By the way, it does deserve some clapping of hands. Oh. And while you're eating, I'm going to speak with you about the whole ceremony. This uh, item, I don't know if I've mentioned to you, that the, of the bigger half that is broken and hidden is called a ficoma. Can you say Afikoman? Afikoman. Now, uh, this is a very interesting ceremony that most of the Jewish people do not understand why they do it, but it is a custom that is done for, for thousands of years already that the, the Abba is taking the middle, remember that he takes, you know, the, the girl here just destroyed all my matzatash. <laughs> she destroyed it. She, <laughs> I mean, there's so much men. Oh my goodness, there are crumbs of matzah all over. My goodness. It's okay. But remember there was in the matzatash, there were three. And then, which matzah did we take? The middle. Now, the middle one. The middle one. Now, why? Why do we have three matzot? Well, the Israelis or the Jewish people said that it represents the three hierarchies in Judaism. What are the three hierarchies in Judaism? The Kohen, the priest, the Levi, Levite, and Israel. And those matzot are standing for it. However, from a messianic perspective, I think there is an interesting commentary. Those three matzot represent the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. And that is very interesting that they pull out the middle matzah, the middle matzah, break it to half, and then and then conceal that matzah with white piece of cloth. Very interesting. And then the children has to come. And they, as you see, they do it voluntarily. They love to do it. And they're excited to retrieve this piece of Afikoma. Very interesting. So, the answer from messianic perspective is that you see here that the matzah was taken in the middle which represents the sun. He was broken for us, was broken for us, put in linen, put in linen, and was hidden. Eventually it was revealed, and now when does it reveal? In this time. This is the time when Yeshua had a very interesting ceremony 
a very interesting ceremony with his people, or actually a declaration. This is the time when he brought the Afikoman and he said, this is my body, in it for my memory, for the memory of me. And he drank the third cup, okay? So we drink first cup, the second cup, and he drank the third cup. What is the name of the third cup? The cup of redemption. redemption. By the way, if I forgot to mention that, why do we have four cups? Because the Lord has promised, has promised through Moshe in the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, he, he promised four things. He said that he will rescue his people, redeem, will take them with outstretched arm, redeem them, and bring them to the land where they will know him. Four actions, four cups. So now, that is the time when Yeshua did his first, we call it Surudat Adon, the Lord's Feast, the first communion. That was the time. So he broke the bread and blessed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu no Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Blessed are you Lord our God, King of the universe to bring forth bread from the earth and it's very interesting bring forth bread from the earth bring forth bread from the earth you already spoke about his resurrection bring forth bread from the earth and he ate so please So that's very, in this time he took the cup of redemption, kos ha and blessed over this wine. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, bore pri hagafen. Blessed are you Lord God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine, the chai. <laughs> the children here, man, I cannot even find my notes under all the screens. <laughs> Let me get control here. Oh. All right. You know, by the way, you know, I need the notes. And whoever wants to copy the notes, I'm sorry, I have bad news for you. It's all written in Hebrew. <laughs> you know, it's all written in Hebrew. So actually, I, I see Hebrew. I translate it to English. Wow. Yes. It's like Hispanic guy. You know, you say hello to him. So his mind is... Hello means hola. <laughs> Respond with hello. <laughs> no, anyway, but uh, I think two weeks ago I spoke somewhere and there was a lady that uh, she said, Oh, I like your teaching so much. Uh, can you please give me your notes? So I get zero, and I promise I will return the notes for you. I said, go ahead, do it. I, I said, if you can understand that, no problem. You know? And she was like, oh. So now, she gave me a mission. I need to copy it in English. So I have to do it. My wife, my beautiful wife here, will promise that she will help me. So... This is the time when Yeshua has done with his Talmidim, his disciples, uh, his, the first communion, the first two Surudat Ha'adon. And you can see a description of it in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses tw uh, 17 to 20. 
The last cup is the cup of the Hallel, the cup of worship, the fourth cup. So please uh, pour to yourselves for the last time the fourth cup. The fourth cup. Okay? Please. In the book of Matthew, it's described that the disciples read and worshipped the Lord. In Hebrew, it means when they actually uh, declared the songs. <coughs> Excuse me. Or sang songs. And then they went to the garden of Gatshmanim. By the way, I have uh, proof uh, to you that uh, the disciples, they were not Baptists. They, they really drank alcohol. And how can I prove it to you? Uh, first of all, when they went to the to Gatshmanim, the Garden of Gethsemane, they were all asleep. Remember Yeshua spoke about the spirit desires, the spirit wants, but the body is weak. And he said, can't you be awake? For one hour, of course, they were drunk. They were drunk, they drank four cups of wine, I'm serious. And, uh, and, and another action of Peter shows that he was a complete drunk. Why? Because when people, the, 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 the guards that were sent by the elders of the Sanhedrin came to arrest Yeshua, what does it say? That Peter chopped somebody's ear. Now, a person, that is has more clear mind and he has a knife in his hand and he really want to stop someone he would stop him in the car in the stomach in the chest something like that if he, but since he was like now what are you trying to do my master he cut somebody's ear there's many proofs from the bibles you know there's a i could prove for example that adam and eve were not chinese if they, from the book of Bereshit, the book of Genesis. How come? If they were Chinese, they would have eaten the snake. So, so, so you can prove it. You just need to look and read between the lines and just use the common sense. So, what? Now the question is, what? On top of why, I ask what? They, which psalm did they read? Which psalm? It is a tradition to, uh, to read Psalm 136. Because it's, at Psalms 136, there is a, a description uh, of, uh, of God's action among His people and how He redeemed the people of Israel from the bondage of Egypt and the plagues that God cast over, that the Lord cast over uh, the people of Israel. I believe that they also were led to read Psalm 118. Why Psalm 118? If you have a Bible, please turn to the book of Tehillim, the book of Psalms. Chapter 118. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just going to read a few verses. Because at that night, at that night, something that is written in that psalm will be a, was about to be fulfilled. A prophecy that was uh, until that moment, until that Seder with Yeshua was not manifested, did not come to pass. At that night, it came to pass. And what do I mean by that? The book of uh, Tehillim, chapter 118, verse 22. This is the night when the most ultimate rejection of Yeshua the Messiah came to pass. This is the time when the Jewish people has... has uh, uh, not the Jewish people, the Jewish leadership, which I believe that they were jealous of Yeshua, just as Moses, the brothers of Yosef were jealous over Yosef, Joseph. They 
made an action. That jealousy made them make an action and that action was rejection. It was predestined that Yeshua will be rejected. And here we see that prophecy. Verse 22, it says in the book of Tehillim 118, the very rock that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This has come from Adonai. And in our eyes, it is amazing. This is the day Adonai has made a day for us to rejoice and be glad. This is the day when Yeshua was rejected. And I want to tell you something that what I feel like the Lord is telling me right now. We need to be rejoiced and be glad that He was rejected. And actually, and actually, there is no room, not in this room, but in the whole world for the spirit of anti-Semitism because the core of the spirit of anti-Semitism is that the Jews were the Christ killers. No, if they would, if they would read this psalm, they realize that the rejection of Yeshua was a day of rejoicing to the world, the day that He was supposed to die for our sins. And He did. It was a day that we should rejoice. It sounds that it didn't make sense just as much that it didn't make to Joseph for more than, more than 10 years to sit in jail and to think why the brothers has rejected him. But eventually Moshe became second man in command, VIP number two that rescued the whole ancient world from the devastation of starvation. So that is the day when the builders couldn't understand Yeshua. The, the Sanhedrin, the elders, the, 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 the rabbis, those people that were experts of the Torah couldn't understand this. Yeshua, and because they couldn't understand Him, they rejected Him. Turned him over to the Romans, and the Romans put him on the cross. Actually, each one of us put him on the cross. Each one of us put him on the, on the tree, on the cross. But this is the day that we should rejoice. There is a story from uh, that when the temple was built in the time of uh, King Shlomo, there were expert builders that came. And there was the stone. That was a that was a hard stone to work with. That its shape it was so weird to work with. And eventually, each builder didn't know what to do with it, and he just threw it on a pile in the corner of the city. And then they came to a, a place where they had to put this corner stone in the temple. And no matter what they tried to do, they tried to 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 engineer this kind of stone. It didn't fit until one of the builders said, "You know what?" There was this stone that we threw, threw away when we started to build this building. Why don't we test it? And they took that stone and without even working over that stone or without doing anything, they just put that stone and right there. The stone was the cornerstone. That's a story. That's a Jewish story. So, I just want to share with you my my uh, life story, and of course, in a nutshell, uh, you know, I grew up Jewish. I grew up in Israel. And the funniest thing was that as a child, I remember that we used to walk in the street, and even if we see two twigs of cross on the street where we used to kick it and say, okay, that, that uh, is a reminder of that man. <laughs> I remember that. I, was, I grew up most of my life, I grew up secular, you know. I had nothing to do with Yeshua. I didn't grow up in a, in a, in a society that had the church in the middle of the neighborhood like we have it here. Like you have a street, in the middle of the street you have synagogue, right next to it there's a church. There was no such a thing. I grew up in a place that was in Tel Aviv, that was, there were only synagogues. That was the only way we can find God. I didn't hear anything about this Yeshua. But what I, one thing I knew, 
that I could be anything under the sun. I could be Buddhist, I could be Muslim, I could be Shintoist, I could be Hinduist, I could, I could jump with underwear up and down in front of fire, nobody will care. <laughs> but I knew that I have nothing to do with this Yeshua. And I didn't understand why. Until I came back from the Far East and uh, I had a plan. And my plan was to make enough money in order to go to Japan and to become a monk, to study martial arts, to shave my head. Back then I had a lot of hair, I'm telling you. <laughs> shave my head and become a monk to study martial arts. I'm telling you, that, that was, this was my goal. So I worked very hard and one of my jobs was to be a bouncer at Stevie Wonder's show. I will never forget that, okay? And I, I walked outside and I saw an evangelist that was attacked verbally by Orthodox Jews and eventually they left. And you know, this guy started to speak with me about Yeshua. He was not the only person. There were three people, two people before him. He was number three that shared with me about Yeshua. And I'm like, what are you saying? This Yeshua, because of him, we suffer so much in this country. Because I had so much hatred toward this Yeshua, even though I didn't know anything about him. <coughs> to tell the story short, he gave me his testimony book that led me to read the Bible sincerely <laughs> since high school. And then I saw one prophecy after then, another manifested and, and was, uh, uh, was fulfilled in Yeshua. And I couldn't believe that I read the, my Tanakh, my, it was the, only the Old Testament. And then suddenly I saw Yeshua coming out from the Word. Now before that, I want to tell you that I, I really admire Judaism. But for me, I, I realized that something is missing in Judaism, and I couldn't ex uh, explain it. It was like, I always like to say, it, it was like the Mona Lisa without the lips. <laughs> that, that has how beautiful. It was like a puzzle of the Mona Lisa without the lips. When I read the Bible, and I read about Yeshua, it took me, I, I cannot even explain to you what I had in my kishkes. You know what kishkes is in Judaism? My guts! I cannot explain to you how much rejection, how much struggles as a Jew. I had to struggle. My gut said, no, no, no. It doesn't make sense, but it's true. I see it in the Bible. I cannot explain to you the emotions. But eventually, when I decided to make this step of faith and to believe in Yeshua the Messiah, first of all, I had an, immer I had an immersion with the Ruach HaKodesh, baptism for the, in the Holy Spirit for the first time in my life. It was an amazing wedding. But then everything, as a Jewish man, everything about Judaism made sense to me. It's like the lips of the Mona Lisa. Bam! And then I, I start to understand what Judaism is all about. Yeshua, that rejected one, became the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. He became uh, the servant that the Messiah speaks about, that the, that the scripture speaks about. He became uh, the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb. Everything about Judaism made sense to me. So, this is my prayer. My prayer is that many of my brothers and sisters will understand it and see the light in Yeshua the Messiah, that they will see this, that they, they, I know, when I'm talking to an Israeli and a Jewish person, I know right away you can feel that, whoo, that rejection. I don't want to hear anything. But also I've been privileged to see, during the time that I live here, I, I was privileged to see 18 Jewish people coming to know the Lord. That's what, praise God. And that is, Part of what I know, I, mean, I don't know how many really uh, accepted the Lord, but this is, I've been witness to that. So even though with all the rejection, eventually it's, it's, a, it's an amazing transformation that happened to a Jewish person when he realized that Yeshua actually is not the stone to be uh, rejected, it is the cornerstone. And you see the rejoice 
and the gladness that this prophecy, the book of Psalm prophesies about, that the joys and the gladness and the, 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 the most amazing joy that we could ever have. Of course, we're going through tribulation, we're going through uh, hard, uh, hardship, but we'd stop to sin, that's for sure. I'm just kidding. So, but this is an amazing, just to see this transformation. And all of that happened through the Passover lamb, Yeshua HaMashiach. So, there's a lot to say more. We just, as I said in the beginning of the, the evening, there's so much to say about the high holidays, um, about the fulfillment of Yeshua. But what we can, I can say right now, when we see the manifestation of Yeshua in the Pesach, <coughs> is that uh, there's also a reflection to the hope that we have, the end days, in the Passover table. As I said, there is a cup that nobody touches, nobody drinks from, that is called the cup of Elijah. There is also a traditional tradition to keep a chair next to it. Not just a cup, a chair. Nobody touches this. The cup of Elijah. Why? Because in Judaism, we believe that this is the time when Elijah will come and bring the heart of fathers and sons to repent before the day of the Lord. As it described in the book of Malachi. The book of Malachi. So it is a tradition that we send... Uh, the children to go and open the door for Elijah to see if he came. Where's the girl that turned all the matzahs upside down? <laughs> can, can a child open the door and see if Elijah came? Anyone? <laughs> Maybe Elijah took her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, as I said, it is a tradition. We take, we open the door, and we welcome Elijah. And it is a tradition to, uh, to leave that cup, even though if you clear the whole table, to leave that cup overnight with the hope that Elijah will come and take a sip. So... To tell the story short, is she there? No, okay. We'll, we will continue. She's not there. So, Daniel, just you open the door. Yeah, you're going to do Tell me if he's there. Is Elijah out there? Elijah? Not yet. But I, what I can wish to you now, in the conclusion, we came to the last conclusion to the Nirza. We did the Kadesh Wachatzka Pesach and Magid Ratzam, Motsim Matzam, Rok, Rok, Shulchan, Rok, Tzafun, Barech, Alein Nirza. I could say, Lashana Haba'a Birushalayim. Next year, may we all celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. Amen. I did, uh, I did see your new talit. What does it say? Sha'alu. Here it's written, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Inquire for the peace of Jerusalem. I know that in most of your translations it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem in the book of Psalm. But actually, it's Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Inquire for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. Would you like God bless you. Did you want to take the baby home? I don't know. They did a really good looking baby out there someplace. Yes. Amen. Um, you know, at Yeshua House, we don't believe in the two bow, two house theory. You know, the two house theory, the Jews over here and the Christians over here. You know, our Korean ministry is called One New Man, One New Man Church. I, we call it not the two house theory we call it the one boat theory if you're not in Christ 
you're not in the boat. Amen. And if you haven't accepted Christ, this, is a, this, this whole week is prophetic. What we saw the other night with the blood moon, that was, that was incredible. And the other day, I, I posted this on, uh, on YouTube. And we started Yeshua House based on the understanding of the diary of Anne Frank. And the Holocaust that they went through. And this week, Israel and the people in Israel brought up a, a story saying the Christian Holocaust. And I have people asking me all the time, oh, when's the tribulation starting? It's already starting over there. It's already happening. We haven't, it just hasn't hit home yet. And I'm going to challenge people this week to get really serious about cleaning their house, cleaning their heart, serving, and tuning into what the Holy Spirit wants them to do. Because if you're not doing that, you're a loose cannon. If you're not doing that, you're, you're, going, to, you're going to fall down someplace in the wrong place. You have to be focused. You, you know, Paul said you have to aim towards the target. That's how you hit the target. You have to aim. In Hebrew, everything is deliberate. Every name, everything has a function. So if we're not deliberately seeking the Messiah, after we found him, we're a liar. And that's what's happening to the ministries across the United States. People are falling down. People are dying because there's no truth in the ministries. It's a bunch of hype and hoop. And we have, we have the Holy Spirit. And usually we minister to people after the, the, the ministry here on Friday nights prophetically. There's nothing I can give you more tonight than if you don't have Christ. You're, you're in trouble. I don't believe in predestination. The only thing is predestined is if you don't accept Christ, you're going to go to hell. And so, we have to get that word back out. We have to get the basics. Tonight, uh, we'll probably pray for some of the folks that are here. I, I, you know, but this, this is over the top. We need your help. We need you to be evangelists. Some man evangelized you. You know, he could have been a doorman. Right? <laughs> it could have been Stevie Wonders. You know, you, you've heard the uh, story about Stevie Wonder driving, right? No, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but the challenge, the challenge is your daily witness and bringing the Holy Spirit to people. And we, we pray for a lot of people here for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's, what, that's what's changed this man. It's changed a lot of us. So tonight, I want to thank you from Yeshua House. Uh, if you want to take some matzah home, take some matzah home. It was on sale. <laughs> um, help, help if you want to help clean up. Um, the horseradish, if you want to take it home, stick it in your pocket. The mint jelly is good. I can't eat all the mint jelly. But, oh, this, you want to take that home? No. That's, that's a big chunk. Honey, you want to come up here? This is my wife. And we, uh, yeah, you come up here. Um, and uh, I don't, I haven't been, have I been stressed this last week? I haven't got any rest. We've been, we've been running this thing, getting it up and ready because you know we have to prepare it. Literally, set this whole thing up last night. We got to tear it down tonight. So anybody that has any energy left, please help us tear it down, clean up. And did you have anything? I want to. How about show? Chawul. Chawul wants to go to Korea. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, you have anything? Oh, come on up, Pastor. Pastor Don, come on up. Hey, let's, get, let's get all the pastors up here and take a picture. Let's get all the pastors in the room. Let's take a picture of the pastors. Jihee. Get with the, the camera. Pastor Stan, can you come up here? You got a minister, are you a minister there, Pamela? <coughs> Pastor Tina? We have more pastors out there. Yeah. Pastor Deborah. 
Well, Cook is cooking. <laughs> Pastor from India. FMI. We got any other one? Did Elaine leave? Oh, okay. God bless. Oh, there's Pastor right there. If you're not a pastor, you're a rabbi, right? Oh, Pastor Cha. Here, she's here. I'm almost in it. How about Pastor Bill? Hey, Bill, we got somebody up there older than you. Bill. Bill, you're a minister. You got a congregation in your living room. I'm in. Just squeeze in a little so we can get in the camera. Six verse one four to twenty six. It's written, and the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you shalom, give you peace. Shalom, Chag Sameach, Dud Yom Tov, Shabbat Shalom.